guys, welcome back to Making Games with Unity. On our last video, we show you the first step on how to implement a object pooling in your game. In our last video, we show you that instead of destroying the enemy, we are just hiding them so that we can reuse them again and again. So we prevent to trigger the garbage collection. So instead of destroying them, we just hide them. And now on this video, we're going to show you on how to apply object pooling on our bullet. Because as you can see right now, when we play this, let's play. And then if we keep on shooting bullets, see this? The hierarchy view, we keep on generating bullets. And that's not good. It will just... Um, eat a lot of resources and our game will lag or crash so we are going to create a bullet manager to handle the object pooling for the bullet and we're going to limit the number of the bullet so that our game become much optimized and better so like before I already created the scripts for this so that this video will become um, faster so first thing first we need to create a any uh, a bullet manager I'm going to click that folder for our simple object pooling uh, we're going to right click here click create c sharp script and we're going to put in bullet manager Inside bullet manager, we are going to create our object pooling implementation. So I'm just going to copy the builds first. All right, here's the build. And then, of course, I'm going to explain them. The bullet prep up here is the, is the bullet prep up that we already have the origin is where the bullet will instantiate meaning it will instantiate at the location of our player and then the max bullet is the max bullet that our player can shoot if we for example set 10 and then we already shoot 10 and then we cannot create any bullet anymore bullet collection is where we're going to put our bullet so we're just going to store it here so that we can keep track on how many bullets we have and then by doing this we can also yeah, man can manage the state of our bullet so right now we're using a list it's also a collection if you don't know lists you can search google and search for list c sharp and then you will know what it is but don't worry uh, we we are also planning to create a c sharp for beginners but we haven't started yet because we're going to complete the basics first but we will make it don't worry but for now yeah we're using a list game list of game object for our bullet collection last time we used a different one for enemy manager we use a generic array but now we're going to show you on how to list, how to use list, sorry, list instead of generic array like this. Because for beginners, this is somewhat confusing and the list is much more friendly. So, yeah. And then next is the height count. Uh, this will just show or calculate how many bullet is being hide but i'm not sure if we need this but we're just going to delete it afterwards if we don't need it and then we're going to create a methods we have i have some methods here already i'm just going to copy paste them again and again yeah copy pasting is dangerous if you don't know what you are being copy all right so right now Yep, the bullet controller is missing an index. So we need to comment this one first and 
we're going to visit our bullet controller and we're going to add a public variable here which is in and we will call it index but it should be capital I because this is public so go back to our bullet manager and we will fix this error here so right now we have some error for the regions because yeah I didn't have the, the start of the region so let's just put it here alright so we have methods here so let's explain this first method this first method is get bullet if you if you call this it will try to call the get inactive bullet so if we go to inactive bullet this code is is using a for loop and it's looking for a bullet that is is not active it can check it using the active cell it means that when this bullet is set active to post this if here will be triggered and then it will reset the position of this bullet to the position of our player which is the origin see here the origin here we're going to pass here the transform of our player so that when we get an active bullet here it will just reset it to the to that position and then after we set the position which is this line of code here we can now set the bullet set active to true and then we can now pass this game object our bullet object to pound and then this break will be triggered break means because in in a loop it will just continue on looping until it reach the count here the condition here but we use break because we already find it so we don't want for this for loop to loop again and again so we just call break to stop that loop and then we can freely go here and pass the pound bullet pre bullet game object here which is which is this one but if if something if all of our bullet is busy it means this will be now and then if this bullet is now or we can find any inactive bullet it means we need to create a new bullet so in here we check our bullet count is it rich max bullet count if not we're going to go here and then we will call the create bullet create bullet yeah from the name create bullet it will just create a new bullet so it will instantiate a bullet using the bullet prepub here and using the origin or the transform position of our player we are going to use them and then see this one this is bad because it's too long we can enter here so that yeah it will be good and then after we create a new bullet from our bullet prepa we are going to access the new bullet bullet controller here see here we we have a reference for that and then we will set the index based on the bullet collection count and then finally after we, we we set the index we're going to add the new bullet to our collection which is the bullet collection here i hope that, that is clear because this is an r this is an array a list array of game object that's why we add it here when we create a new bullet and then when we go back to our code if this bullet have a value value actually after that we didn't check at all because we know that it has a value but we can do more checking but for now let's leave it like that and then we're going to pass the bullet whoever called this get bullet so next is hide bullet this will just hide all the bullet but I haven't used it yet but maybe we're going to use it somewhere and then we have a hide bullet handler here a wrong spelling one handler here uh, this will just hide the bullet by using the index so after that we can go back to our bullet controller 
and now inside our bullet controller we need to create a new custom event which is hide bullet so I'm going to put it here this is the same thing almost just a different custom event uh, this is for hiding our bullet so right now if we check on our trigger we are destroying the bullet here so we don't need that instead of destroying our bullet we're going to dispatch an event which is hide bullet so let's use that hide bullet so now we can put the index here see here when I click this index because when we create a bullet we put an index value to them so when we want to hide this bullet we just pass in the index which will go inside our bullet manager see here hide bullet hunter but now there's no listener so we need to add that listener so on our start we need to add a bullet controller listener which is this and then we're just going to fix this and then on destroy we also need to remove that listener so that when we don't need it we just remove it so in here this is the listener for that and then we're, we're just removing it and again yeah plus equal equals uh, it, it means you're listening to this to this event from bullet controller minus equal you want you don't want to listen anymore so you're you're removing it so inside here the bullet hide bullet hunter we call the hide bullet it will look for that bullet so in here it checks if the bullet exists if that bullet exists we will hide it using the index that we pass in if you're confused about that index see here when we create a bullet it will set the index based on the count of the bullet collection all right so let's save that bullet manager we go to bullet controller and now we already replaced the the cost of event calls and now we also comment out the destroy all right time to go back to unity wow that was really long i hope you you can catch up with that just tell me in the comment if this is too fast i hope you understand what's going on so right now in the hierarchy view we can click we can right click create empty object we're going to create a bullet manager here bullet man manager manager all right we get a bullet manager we're going to drag our bullet manager on that new prefab and new game object i mean and then we're going to look for our uh we're going, we're going to lock this first i'm going to put our bullet prefab and then i'm going to drag the position of our player which is the transform i'm going i'm just going to click our player here and then drag it to the region it means we're going to use the player's position when we instantiate the bullet and then the max count i'm just going to to place 10 unlock the padlock save save and then let's try it let's see what hap what will happen so okay so we get some problem here we get a negative size on bullet manager 78 okay bullet manager 78 we get a bullet count why we have a bullet count we save we save it here ah, i see because um we're not actually using the get bullet which is this one see here it's gray it's never used so we forget to implement this get bullet to our sh uh, to our shoot controller so 
we're going to open our shoot controller we're going to go to our project view here script shoot controller because this is the one who managed the bullet so in here we need to create a new public variable so we're going to create a bullet manager public manager here so we will, we will have an access to bullet manager and we're going to comment out this instantiate because we're going to use the bullet manager get bullet instead of that so we're going to put it here and then see here we're using the get bullet which is this one so it will check first if there's an inactive bullet if there's no inactive we're going to create a bullet if we haven't reached the max bullet count so i hope you're not confused so going back to shoot controller so in here when we press left click it will call the shoot bullet here and then the shoot bullet will check if bullet manager exists and then it will get it will call the get bullet so inside the get bullet it will create a bullet and then inside our bullet controller our bullet will just move forward because we have a transform that translate that moves the bullet forward if you watch our previous video uh, you should know that so now we can go back to unity and wait for it to be saved it's still loading here see all right it's done click save save then hit play so right now because we set the bullet manager to be max bullet count of 10 we can only use we can only use 10 bullets so now move left i can shoot bullet now it's not working you know why it's not working we need to click the player and then check for our shoot controller because the bullet manager is empty here so we need to drag our bullet manager here put it there save our scene again and our project to be sure and then hit play and then let's try it all right moving the character i can shoot now bam see i cannot create anymore because we already reached a bullet 10 bullet here 2 4 6 8 10 but the problem is the bullet and is keep on moving further away see see the bullet see the bullet here they keep on moving and then i cannot shoot anymore oh my god so yeah we have a problem and we need to fix that problem so how to fix the problem so right now we can go back to our bullet controller and now when we check this one we only hide it when it hit an enemy but right now we need to check also the distance so that we can hide the bullet so to fix that we can create a separate method for dispatching the hide bullet i'm going to put it here so instead of using this one i'm just going to put it on another method so that we can call it in a simpler way i'm just going to remove this and put it here so here i just put the same thing i just put it in the method because we're going to use it again so our problem is the bullet is too far away but the bullet is still there and still not hiding so we need to hide that when it reach a certain distance so based on my last test when the bullet distance is 40 for the z axis this one i'm going to dispatch the height bullet so we can save this and go back to unity and wait for the for the script to be saved and then that is saved now sorry for the sound and then i'm going to hit play so now we can check we can click the y and then click our player so let's see now i'm going to move, use the move tool click on the screen 
So now see our bullet, it trub it tr it troubles. But after here, this is the port the port z axis distance, and then the bullet is disappear. Let's try it again. Oops, it hit an enemy, so it's also hide. We have two condition. When the bullet hit the enemy, we will hide the bullet. If the bullet reach z position of forty, it will disappear, or we will just hide it instead of destroying it. So now. It seems working. We can try it now. I can shoot now. Shoot, 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 shoot. See, but now see this one. The our bullet is being hide. It means I can shoot again, All right? And then we limit it to ten. See, we can also limit our bullet to five only, so that we can see the difference. So I'm going to yeah, adjust this. I'm going to. Shoot now! Shoot! 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 See, because I reach five, I cannot shoot anymore. But after the bullet is inactive again, I can use it again. So this is the good thing. Instead of destroying them, we're just reusing them. And then for for your game design, just make a like a overheat, so the player will just keep on shooting bullet, and then when they reach a certain uh, limit. And then just make an apex that yeah their their gun is overheating or they don't have enough bullet so that's the moment they need to um, reload so it's like uh, combining the, the game design to the optim for the optimization of your game so that it won't feel that like you're just enforcing it to them so right now there's no more bullet and then there's no more enemy what's wrong it seems that our enemy manager is not working because when we hide all the the enemy it will show the enemy again let's try it maybe there's something wrong Oh yeah, it's it's working, but I'm not sure what happened before. See, all right, let's try again. Maybe there's something that we need to fix, but for now, it, it seems working. Oh yeah, after after that that one after that set, it's dead. All right, we need to find out why our enemy manager is not working. So I'm going to open the enemy monitor and then it seems that we we are not resetting our height count. So I'm just going to copy that and then when we show our our enemy again I'm going to what? I'm going to put the height count to zero. So yeah I, that's fixed the problem and now we can happily shoot our bullet and then we have a unlimited an unlimited number of enemies so we can just keep on shooting here but yeah we got a object pulling that limits our bullet that's a time we need to reload but for now yeah it limits the bullet we have an implementation of simple object pulling and i think this is good and yeah it's our demo or our tutorial are are taking shape now it's becoming more of a little game now so yeah it's like a wave of an enemy keep on regenerating and you keep on shooting them and you are getting score by killing them and yes that's it guys we have some little games here so we can stop this play now and recap what the heck happened so what happened is we create a bullet manager and then this bullet manager implements the object pooling so in our player we have a shoot controller here inside our shoot controller controller we call the get bullet from the bullet manager so in our player we have a reference for bullet manager because the player holds the shoot controller 
so here see here and then if we go inside that the get bullet bullet is first checking if there's an inactive bullet and then he will get that bullet if there's no inactive bullet it will create a new bullet but keep in mind that we put a max bullet count it means we can now make a limitation for our bullet it could be 3 5 10 whatever number you want and then it will just get generate that bullet and then when the bullet hits the enemy it will call the hide bullet using the custom event that we just created so if we go to the bullet controller here it will just dispatch if, we, if the bullet hit the enemy using this one and we, we dispatch we call this hide bullet custom event here which is this one and then when our bullet reach a distance of 40 float we will also hide them by calling the same custom event which is this one also and inside our bullet manager we use an a list our collection a, co a list collection of game object and yeah i i think as a beginner use this because this is more friendly it's more easier to use and then we can add a new bullet by calling the collection bullet collection that add and then we just call the bullet here and then inside here when we create a new bullet we are getting the reference for uh, for the bullet controller by using the get component and then we set the value in the index using the bullet collection count so yeah that's what's going on here so yeah if you are still getting confused you can uh, watch the whole video again and if you really can understand some something or you're getting confused uh, you can comment below we will try to answer that or you can message us uh, but I think comment is better so that uh, other people can also read it and yeah I think that's all guys uh, yeah I know that object pooling is not a super basic concept but I want you guys to learn this at the beginning so that you can uh, really optimize your game and make your game um, in a good state at the start of your game development journey so guys again if you enjoy this video and if you like this kind of content and if you haven't subscribed yet please please subscribe and please like this video and please share it with your friends and again guys i hope you learned something and thank you for watching our video and our tutorial and see you on the next video. Goodbye guys and have a nice day.